Well, bullying appears to be quite rife at South African schools with incidents being reported regularly. Just yesterday, we brought you a story of a young girl who's believed to have taken her own life in Limpopo after she was assaulted by another pupil. So it appears, in fact, from some research that girls in South Africa are affected the worst by bullying. Let's discuss this now by bringing in Professor Divya Bana with the University of Guazul Natal. Prof, good to have your time. You were part of research, a study that looked at violence, especially against girls in South African schools. Take us through very briefly just the core of your findings when you did do this research. So the first thing that I want to say is that the issue of um, gender violence in schools is not limited to South Africa. There has been a kind of global campaigns to end such violence. In South Africa, however, we face a crisis. And that crisis is not simply based in schools, but also in broader society. In fact, there are now um, massive interventions as well as huge political will to end violence against women and girls. Um, this particular research looked at the ways in which um, violence is experienced and negotiated by both boys and girls in a, in a high school. And what we found, um, and of course the, the findings are quite broad, but one of the major findings is that the, the school space and the architecture of the school remains important because boys and girls access dilapidated spaces and it is in these spaces then that um, you know the smoking of um, uh, marijuana or the engagement in illicit sexual activities occurs but that's then just one issue around the broader architecture of the school which is related to then the quintile status so, for instance, dilapidated school structures may not be very familiar in very elite uh, Quinta One uh, schools. So th this points directly to the uneven and unequal distribution um, and the stark inequalities that still shape South African schools. The second issue is around the, the gendered ideologies, and this remains an important area of, um, of uh, both understanding what mm -hmm. these ideologies are, but also changing them. On so gender ideologies, pardon me, Prof, because I want to come in on the yes. point you're making about gendered ideologies. It's often interesting that we, when we think about um, violence or abuse between pupils, we limit it to punching, hitting, uh, taunting each other, but you also uncovered very worrying trends as far as sexual violence among pupils. Exactly. So it is, violence is quite a blurry concept. And in order to understand what it means, we need to go right to the ground. We need to listen to girls and boys to understand their own experience in order to expand our vocabulary and in doing so, shape our interventions. So these ideologies are based on um, cultural norms, religious norms, and broader social norms, which suggest power and domination to men and boys. Now, this doesn't mean that girls lack uh, power, but that there is a tough negotiation happening right under the gaze of school teachers, where these dynamics play out, but they are often missed by school authority because we fail to understand that these ideologies are very much part of being a young person at school. For instance, if I want to uh, quickly go to the, the, the Limpopo case, this was a case of bullying amongst girls. And while the research has very rightfully focused on the issue of uh, male violence, which remains a scourge, what we miss is the sort of dynamics that play out between and amongst girls as well. And this sort of bullying is both physical, it is, um, it it's, uh, questions one's dignity and integrity, and it is an ongoing onslaught mm -hmm. on, the, on the very being of a person, which then results in what we have just seen. Let's speak, Prof, about very briefly the veil of secrecy often. I know you were referencing schools where there are 
uh, boys and girls together. But often, I mean, we've been dealing with sexual assault at all boys' schools, for example, over the past few years. And there's often that veil of secrecy that if a video is not leaked, a lot of children come out of the education system holding on to these dark secrets, which then lead to further mental health issues further down the line, as we've seen. This is really powerful, that what we are just uncovering is just the tip of the iceberg. We have, do not have the necessary skills um, uh, to ensure that our children are protected and that part of our research in, at the University of KwaZulu-Natal and the South African research chain in particular is really to do uh, our best to uncover, to unravel, so that we can expose these points of secrecy and ensure that they come out so that we can um, prevent what has just happened in Limpopo. But it requires, I would say, uh, a far more complex uh, understanding of what these interventions should look like. They require um, taking children and young people's voices seriously. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we have enough of that. In certain contexts, we understand that South African children live in fragile family house households. They don't have supportive schooling contexts. Neither do they have the skills to understand where to go and report. And if they do report in rare instances, such reports are often squashed in the interest of negotiating and, as you said, silencing uh, such, uh, such issues. Mm. So there is an urgent need to address violence and gender violence in schools. Professor. We need to create safe, safe spaces to ensure that we meet the national um, uh, development plan of 230 right. and that our schools are safe. Professor Divya Bana, there's definitely space for a much longer conversation with you. But for now, thank you so much for speaking to us on ENCA. She's with the University of Guazim Natal.